Hey duties. <laughs> What's up? How you doing? You feeling okay? <laughs> Hanging in there? Um, it's a hard time out there. Everyone, while I'm filming this, everyone is pretty much quarantined around the world. We're all stuck inside in our pajamas, watching Netflix, picking up new hobbies, working from home, all of it in our pajamas. So today I thought what better thing to talk about than the history of pajamas. It's going to be super fun. I have done a lot of research on it and yeah, I hope you enjoy it. to pajama jeans, your jammies have seen a lot. PJs have gone from formal to casual, frilly to frumpy, gender specific to unisex, but these shifting trends weren't just brought about by what was hottest in the most recent Sears Roebuck catalog. They were brought about by necessity, whether it be shifting technology, war, or just simple etiquette. And after consulting several historic archives, dozens of vintage catalogs, and some of my favorite movies, I managed to put together three different looks that I think represent some of the biggest moments in sleepwear, like this one. So while this is probably not absolutely historically accurate, I mean, this is the best Amazon could do during these trying times. And I thought it would, you know, do the job to just show y'all kind of what somebody would wear in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Basically, there wasn't always a market for specific sleep clothing. Up until the 1800s, people would either catch these in the buff or simply wear undergarments. Even upon its invention, sleepwear was usually homemade, which means that designs had to be simple and easy to assemble. Therefore, night attire was basically shapeless. <laughs> like this. One of the things I really find interesting about this time period is that a lot of the sleepwear was white or pale colors because for a long time laundry was even more time consuming and difficult than it is today. And even today it is so, it's still so difficult for me. I hate doing laundry. You plunge and scrub. Plunge and scrub. And plunge and scrub and plunge and scrub and knit. Now we use things like Tide or Purcell, but back then our ancestors used lye and harsh chemicals. They needed their pajamas to be able to withstand boiling and bleaching. So there was no need to waste precious dyes on these garments that were overwashed and no one would even see. Another thing that I really like about this time period and I think that you'll recognize is a cap like this one. So back in the day, a lot of bedrooms weren't heated like we have now, so it was really important to bundle up. This nightcap became a great option to keep your head warm and the long flowy fabric, the reason why it's so long and pointy is because it doubled, it actually doubled as a scarf, which is actually pretty cool. It was kind of like a turn of the century life hack. Hello. Thanks, Grandma and Grandpa. <laughs> Okay, as you can see, we've gotten in our time machines and gone to the 50s. Glamorous! This is the 50s nightgown of my dreams. I mean, hello, it's pink. It has feathers. It's shiny. Like, is there anything better than that? With the introduction of the sewing machine and the launching of ready-to-wear clothing, sleepwear would become more diverse and ornate and intricate, much like you see here in this very costumey version of a 50s pajama set. <laughs> I think that there's feathers in my eyelashes. There's feathers everywhere. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> so another reason why I really liked the 1950s sleepwear is because they kind of went through something that we're going through now, that like kind of gray area between streetwear and sleepwear. 
So for instance, now I think you'll go to the grocery store in the same clothes that you might sleep in. <laughs> I'm not calling anybody out. I do the same thing. Um, but yeah, so like leggings and t-shirts are both streetwear and then also can be considered sleepwear. Well, they kind of did the same thing in the 1950s, but they called it at-home wear or hostess gowns or lounging pajamas. <sighs> lounging pajamas makes it sound so cool <laughs> and so luxurious. So basically, the lady of the house would not greet her guests in the uh, leggings and t-shirt of today, but instead, you know, bright colored uh, maxi dresses with long billowing sleeves and very glamorous and just basically like a cross between an evening dress and a robe, which is like right in the neighborhood I want to be in. <laughs> In a publication called The Art of Being a Well-Dressed Wife, <laughs> a Saks Fifth Avenue designer laid out a guiding principle for women that states, remember it's your husband for whom you're dressing. And that applies 24-7. So you just always have to look good for your husband. Which actually reminds me of a scene I don't know if they do this anymore, but in the very beginning of um, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, when she gets up before her husband, puts on her makeup, and then like wakes up this like beautiful wife, all put together, that's like the perfect example of like what the standards were back then. So next up, we're tackling the 70s. Disco, Saturday Night Fever, I'm pretty sure that was the 70s. Stayin' alive, stayin' alive. Mm, uh, you can't uh, tell uh, by the way I use my walk. I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. Anyway. <laughs> so peace, love, and equality. All core values of the 70s, and all of which made way for a new wave in unisex styling and sleepwear. Say that three times fast. Unisex styling and sleepwear. Unisex styling and sleepwear. Unisex styling and sleepwear. Oh my god, that was so funny! <laughs> It all started with a designer named Houston who designed pantsuits that he referred to as pajama dressing. His pieces were indicative of the unisex fashion trend with silhouettes that were relaxed and unstructured. Satin jammies that were first made popular in the 1920s had made a comeback, but this time with both men and women. <laughs> so one of my all-time favorite things about the 70s uh, pajama trends is the Invention of family matching pajamas. God, so good. I love it. We still do it today. I'm guilty of it. I bet you're guilty of it. I've seen the Instagram photos from Christmas time. Everybody's wearing, you know, mom's wearing the dog, the cat, the baby, grandma, and grandpa. Everybody's wearing the loudest Christmas plaid matching pajama set. <sighs> There's really nothing better. I mean, why it started, who knows, but I think we can all be thankful for it. So that was our walk down memory lane pajama edition. I had so much fun with this. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I had so much fun picking out these looks, putting them together, and learning about all the interesting trends that have happened over the last century or so. If you liked this video, please be sure to click the like button below, and if you want to see more videos from me, be sure to click the subscribe button as well. Thank you so much. See you later. Bye y'all.